Hi, in this video today we're going to talk about um, the, the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues and look into um, what Paul opens up about tongues and hopefully solve some confusion there is um, with regards to, to speaking in tongues. So I'll first start with um, by turning to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses uh, 8 through 10. And here's Paul, Paul's writing. He says, Charity, or love, never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. And then verse 10. This is the, the main verse right now that we're going to focus on. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. And this is a passage of scripture that many people today will use to say that, that the gifts of the Spirit have ceased and that there, it's, when it says, whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Well, they say that that which is perfect is the word of God. And that since it's come, since it's arrived <clears throat> in its entirety, that all this is done away. So that was only for a time back back in the early church. Um, and so the reason being is that they they interpret that as as that is that they can't accept for some reason that this is referring to Jesus Christ. And many will say that it can't refer to Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ would never be referred to as a that. When it says, but when that which is perfect is come. However, when we turn to Luke 135, it reads, And the angel answered and said unto her, this is Mary, um, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So here... Uh, Jesus was called that holy thing, which uh, was going to be born of Mary. So, there's another example in the Word of God where we know it's talking to, about Jesus, and that he's referred to as a that. Now, in verse 10, but when that which is perfect is come, it is referring to Jesus Christ. And all, this, all these things, the gifts um, for edifying the body and everything will be done away because there will be no longer be need for that. But it's important to understand that it, they are still for today. So then let's flip back to chapter 12. And in chapter 12, um, Paul talks about the gifts of the Spirit. But many people will just turn to verse 30, where it says, Have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret. And here, um, Paul is implying that not everyone does speak with tongues. And he'd be correct in, imply, in, 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 in implying that because in the context of that whole chapter, if we go back earlier in chapter 12, it's referring to the gifts of the Spirit. So earlier in chapter 12, verse 4, Paul says, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And then go on to verse 8. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another, another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, in verse 10, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of those tongues. So there we have all the gifts of Spirit laid out. And in verse 11, it says, But all these worketh that one and the self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. So the Holy Spirit divides to the body of believers the gifts that will edify and bring together and accomplish God's purpose for the church. So that's what we can get out of all that. So all the gifts are in operation through the body. And the Spirit 
um, divides to every man severally as he will. <clears throat> so, do all speak with tongues in verse 30 is referring to do all um, have the gift of diverse kinds of tongues. That's the context of that. And so what, what Paul is implying by that is, no, not all have the gifts of the gift of tongues, using it in, in that context. But when we turn to chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians, this is where deeper revelation about the different types of tongues come out. So in my previous video, I discussed how when we're baptized with the Holy Spirit, the sign that we've been filled or baptized with the Holy Spirit is speaking in other tongues. And anyone who's been filled with the Spirit can speak in tongues as a, a means to, to pray to God. And Paul talks about speaking in tongues in that manner throughout chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians. But then there's also um, the gift of speaking in tongues, the gift of the Spirit. And that is used to edify the body of Christ, the church. So, speaking in tongues as a prayer to God is it edifies ourself, the one, the one praying. It doesn't edify the body. But then, being used in the gift of tongues to, to the body, as long as someone interprets, that has the gift of interpretation, then that edifies the entire body. And so we will see in chapter 14, because of this, it, uh, Paul's words, they, he implies that there are two con t kinds of tongues. Tongues with which all believers can speak, can pray to God with, praying in tongues or speaking in tongues in that manner, or the gift of tongue, of diverse tongues, in a, as a whole in the church body for edification of the entire body after someone interprets. So we're going to go into the verses that discuss that. So we first turn to 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2. Paul says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. And continue on to verse 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. Now we're just going to focus on the tongue part of this. So, that tells us that there's a speaking in tongues that edifies self. And this would be the, the um, tongues that every believer that's been filled with the Holy Spirit can speak in. And should speak in because it, it's how we edify self. It's how we build ourselves up. We pray to God uh, in the Spirit. And God, God knows what we're, what, what we're speaking but nobody else does, not even ourselves, and it edifies ourselves. And so we're going to see that a little more clearly later on in chapter 14, but for now I just wanted to mention that. And then, continuing on to verse 5, it says, I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. So he's saying, yeah, it's great to speak in tongues, but it's greater that someone prophesieth than he that speaketh with, with tongues, because the pro prophesying will is meant to edify the body. But then he says, except he interpret, meaning, but if someone interprets those tongues, then the the church would be edified through it, and therefore it's it's a good it, it's just as as good as prophesying amongst a body of believers. So hopefully that you can that that's clear there in that verse that um, interpretation of tongues comes into the situation that says okay it's not just someone speaking in tongues like your own prayer language to God um, talking to God but it's rather meant to be using the gift of speaking in tongues for the church and then it's interpreted and then we'll jump over to verse fourteen. In 15, which this also brings up a little more um, understanding with regards to there being two types of tongues. Verse 14, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, 
my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. And that, that kind of right then there, right there just shows, it clears up a lot of things. That praying in an unknown tongue, your spirit's praying, but your understanding is unfruitful. You don't know what you're saying. Um, and verse 15 clarifies and, and reveals more about what it means. What is it then? Paul says, I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. So here he's saying that we can pray with the spirit and we can pray with the understanding. Now, the understanding is our, our native tongue. It's my native tongue is English. So when I pray to God in English, I can understand what I'm saying and so can everyone around me. But when I pray in the spirit or with the spirit, I, I'm praying uh, in, a, in an unknown tongue and I don't understand what I'm saying, but God understands me. So when you compare these verses 14 and 15 with verse, verse 2 and 4, you can see how it differentiates between uh, the gift of speaking in tongues with someone using the gift of interpreting tongues to edify the body versus just speaking in tongues to edify self. <clears throat> and that's speaking or praying. They're kind of the same, the same things. Like you're speaking in tongues. Like I could be speaking in, in tongues throughout my day. Let's say I'm at work and I'm speaking in tongues. I'm praying to God. I'm praying in tongues. But it, Paul says here, speaking in tongues. It's, a, it's the same understanding. <clears throat> and so we then go down to uh, verse 18. And here's another, uh, there's a powerful revelation to be had here about um, the tongues that Paul, Paul is differentiating between the gift of the Spirit operating for, to edify the body and um, our own personal prayer language with God. These eight, verses 18 and 19 really open that up. Verse 18 says, I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than you all. So he's saying, I speak with tongues more than you all, and I'm thankful for it. <clears throat> but then verse 19 clar clarifies what he's talking about. He, he's not talking about that he speaks with tongues to the church used in the gift of the Spirit more than them all. No, he, verse, verse 19 will reveal that he's talking about actually how he, he prays uh, in tongues more than them all. Because he says, Yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding, in my native tongue, rather, that by my voice I might teach others also, than ten thousand words in an unknown tongue. So he's saying, but it, it's better for me to speak uh, in my native tongue that everyone can understand around me, that he might teach others or edify others, than ten thousand words in an unknown tongue. So rather than Paul um, praying uh, in the Spirit and not no one understanding, not even himself, he says it's better that he preach or that he speaks in, in his native language. But yet Paul says, "I thank my God." I in verse eighteen, "I thank my God." I speak with tongues more than you all. So that's referring to his own personal prayer language to God, praying uh, in the Spirit. So praying uh, from verse. Um, verse 14 and 15, I will pray with the Spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. So that kind of bring, sheds even more light on that the, there are two types of tongues. So, and then he goes on, he said, uh, uh, verse 26, he said there, the, the, there was a lot of disorder amongst how tongues were being used in, in uh, the, the church in Corinth. He's like, why is it when you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation? Paul says, no, let all things be done unto edifying. And in verse 27, if any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. And he, he says, but if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. So what he's saying is that there shouldn't be all everyone just speaking all randomly in, in tongues. Um, that you, there should be order to it. And so 
at the most three, but one goes, then two goes, and three, and then only if someone is there that, that will be using the gift of interpretation. And if there is no one to interpret to be using that gift, then it's best to, for that person just to keep quiet and just to, to pray uh, to God, to, to pray in the Spirit. And so that's kind of how that that that, that uh, bl you know blends together with all of Paul's other words about it. And so verse thirty three, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. So he's like, tongue shouldn't be this confusing uh, mesh mash of whatever that 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 shows. Well, maybe something's wrong. Maybe there needs to be a little more order to how we're doing things. And so he ends it by saying, verse 39, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak in tongues. So he's saying we should never forbid one another to speak in tongues. Verse 40, let all things be done decently and in order. So uh, don't forbid anyone, anyone to speak in tongues. There's nothing wrong in a church gathering. Now, when I say church gathering, the body of believers gathering anywhere, an assembly of, of believers in a home, in a building, outside, where have you, that's the church. So where they're, where they're gathered, uh, if someone in their own quiet prayer is praying aloud in the Spirit, in an unknown, in an unknown tongue, that's totally fine. What Paul is saying is that it, we're not supposed to broadcast that prayer as if we're you being operate or we're operating in the gift of the spirit of diverse tongues that someone should be interpreting because that Paul Paul's like it's best just to keep silence if, if there's no one there to interpret. So hopefully that that that's clear and just to sum everything up. So when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, the sign that we've been filled is speaking in other tongues. That's the, that's the promise of the Father, the gift of the Holy Ghost now indwelling us. And by that Spirit, we can now pray in an unknown tongue to God, who Paul, Paul says, For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries, but God understands. So it's a, it's a prayer language to God, and it edifies the person praying. So that's for every single believer that's been filled with the Holy Ghost, um, pr uh, praying in other tongues. We are all encouraged to do that. But the gift of the Spirit, of diverse tongues, speaking in diverse tongues, is not for everyone. That's, that's for... Um, I mean, everyone in the body, if the Holy Spirit moves upon someone to be used in that gift at a certain time, can operate in the gift of diverse tongues. But that is not for everyone all the time. That's not a personal uh, thing. That's to edify the body. So that's really important to differentiate between uh, speaking in tongues in one's own prayer with, to God and then speaking in tongues to the church being used in the gift of that of the spirit in that way to then have someone who has a gift of interpretation interpret and then so everyone in the body can be edified as a whole god speaking to the body in that way so hopefully that that's that's clear now and um yeah i just think that it's really important that we recognize that we need to be filled with the Spirit. There is a sign that we have been filled with the Spirit. If we haven't spoken in tongues yet, we don't seek to be to speak in tongues. We seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So we got to look. Remember the gospel again. Uh, we we truly repent. We turn from our sins completely. We 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 recognize our sins uh, have separated us from God. We hate our sins we we're, we're, we we no longer want to be a part of that the, the the sinful life that we once lived and we turn to Jesus we get baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins and when we come up out of the water we rise to walk in newness of life and we seek to be filled with the holy spirit and when we're when we're truly filled with the holy spirit the lord will tame our tongue. The Bible says that the tongue is the most unruly member of the body. Who can tame it? 
No man can tame it. But God has chosen the tongue to be the means by which he shows us that he's filled us with his spirit and therefore showing that he can even tame our tongue and we speak a language that we, we don't know, we never learned. So it's a pretty powerful thing. So if, you, if you've obeyed the gospel and by repenting and uh, being baptized in water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, then it's a promise that you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You will be filled with the Holy Ghost. So you just need to have someone pray with you who can lay their hands on you and uh, pray that you be filled with the Holy Spirit and just welcome, uh, like just the, the praise and worship, praise Jesus, have your focus go totally on Him and you will be filled with the Holy Ghost because it's a promise. So seek to be filled with the Spirit and tongues will flow as you worship God, as you talk to God. So... That's the video that I wanted to do today. I hope it was um, just really uh, taught you uh, the difference between there, that there are two types of tongues and there, the confusion that can come from when, when people say, oh, well, tongues aren't for everyone because Paul said here or there, um, no, tongues are for everyone. We just got to remember that there's two types of tongues and you, being used in the gift of the spirit, diverse kinds of tongues isn't for everyone all the time. So anyway, if you have any questions, if any of that was confusing, feel free to uh, ask some questions below, comment. And uh, in my next video, I'm not sure what it will be about. It may be about, is doctrine important? Um, doctrine seems to be a, a, a bad word today, but it's actually um, a, a really important thing according to the Apostle Paul. So that may be the next video that I do. All right, God bless you, and thanks for joining in.